Now I want to spend a few moments on getting to know the settings because they help you really to customize your Edgewong trading journal and your journaling experience to your personal needs. First, we go to settings here at the bottom left in the menu, and then we can open the general settings. Here you have things like the journal name, you can change that. You have your account currency, the markets that you're trading. As I mentioned in the previous video, when you're selecting stocks, you will see that we have now this option, auto calculate profit and loss. This means that after you've entered your entry price, the quantity, and also the exit price, the P&L for the trades will be calculated automatically. If you're importing your trades, however, all of your P&L will be imported from your trading platform anyway, and you don't have to worry about that. You can also have multiple selections. You can also change the default trade type, and you can see we have spot option and future. If you're trading stocks or Forex, you simply select spot, and you don't have to worry about that again. We can save that, and then we go to the deposits and the withdrawals. Here you can record the deposits or the withdrawals that you are doing in your trading account. When you're using the import function, your trading platform will provide in most cases the deposits and the withdrawals in the trade history. So you don't have to really worry about that. But you can also of course manually record new deposits and withdrawals here. Next are the instruments. Those are all the instruments that you have traded or imported using the import function. First of all, you can change the name. So just by clicking into the field, you can see it becomes editable and then you can change the name here, but you can also drag them around here and that will change the order in the filters. And also when you go back to your trading journal and open the trade setup, it changes the order in the list that they will appear in. I briefly mentioned already the setups in the previous video. Here you enter the setups or the trading strategies for your trades that you want to use. And again, you can switch them around here and change the ordering. You can also add a short description here. When you want to disable a setup, you simply click on the trash icon and then they will appear here in the disabled items. You can bring them back if you want at a later part. You cannot completely delete them because we have to ensure the integrity of your trading data. If you have a trade that has a specific setup and then you would completely delete it from your trading journal, then it could break your trading data. So that's why you can only disable them and then they will disappear. In the last video, I showed you that you can assign trade entry, trade management and trade exit comments to each of your trades and that will unlock the tilt meter. And here you can manage and see them all at once. As you can see, we have the trade entry comments here and then you have the rating. You can change the rating if you want at a later part very easily here. And that will then also adjust the tilt meter. In the beginning, we recommend to keep it at a very minimum basis when it comes to adding trade entry, trade management and trade exit comments. We've seen that some traders end up with long lists for all of those categories. But what then happens is that they very hardly get a good sample size in. If you have 10 entry comments, but only 20 trades in your journal, you will not be using the same entry comment a lot. So instead focus on the broader categories for trade entry management and exit comments. And you will see that you will get a lot of good data out of it. You can pause the video and see what we have used here for inspiration. If you don't know what to use for in your trading journal. However, another thing that is very helpful is that when you revisit your trading journal and you revisit your trades, and then you get to the point of assigning trade entry management and exit comments, just think about what went wrong at the trade or what you did right here, and then create a new comment based on the actual thing that happened. We will come back to the sessions part in a later video because we are dedicating a whole video on sessions and trading preparations. Without going too deep into custom statistics, because we're also dedicating a whole separate video to custom statistics, those are essentially categories of tags that you can add to your trade. When we go back to the journal and open a random trade, under advanced trade data, when we scroll down, you can see here are your custom stats or custom statistics, and you can assign them to your trades and then later analyze them across the journal, also using the filters. And we have a few specific dedicated tabs for them. And with the custom statistics, you can track pretty much anything. As you can see here, this journal tracks the time frame, confluence factors, patterns, the preparation, a mental state of the trader. He's using indicators. We can track general market indicators. You have a statistic for missed trades. We will come back to that. A second confluence here. And you can see you have up to 20 available slots. However, what we have seen is that in the beginning, keep it to an absolute minimum because the more experience you gain with your Edgewong trading journal, the more ideas you will have when it comes to adding and tracking custom statistics. 
and you don't want to run out of space early on when it comes to custom stats. So keep it at a minimum. It would also help you speed up the entry process. And custom stats are not the most important in the beginning. Of course, there is a great feature and we will revisit them specifically. But in the beginning, as I said in the last video, focus on the core bases, which are the general trade data and your entry, exit and trade management comments.